Okay. No, I never said five grams. Uh, anybody take five grams of psilocybin, I take my hat off to, um, because it takes courage to be able to go into those type of uh, places and spaces. Um, I'm the high dose guy. You know, I talk about high dose mushrooms. Uh, glad to be in Prague. You know, the uh, the golden city, the city that had the great alchemists, you know, Edward Kelly and John D. Michael Myers. Uh, this is where the uh, the Rabbi Judah Lau Ben Baziel created the golem, which was a precursor of a, a later golem that was written about by Mary Shelley, Frankenstein, by taking a clay effigy and by speaking the unutterable name of God to the effigy, it became animate. So I'm glad to be in Prague and uh, a place where they, they created the Philosopher's Stone out of orbitally rearranged monatomic elements. First of all, I'd like to say um, it was hard getting here not because I came from Detroit, Michigan, and then uh, to New Orleans, Louisiana, then to New York, then to Turkey, then here. Uh, it was hard getting here between the corner down there of the street and down here because I was trying to ask people, where is the old waste treatment plant? And people were saying, what do you mean, old waste treatment plant? I'm saying the old waste treatment plant. And I kept going up to people, you know, at the bus stop on the street, and they saying, the old waste treatment plant, what is that? I thought it was a famous place, you know, the way they said on Google. But, you know, you can't take Google, uh, you know, Google doesn't even know how to spell Google. So it, it's not spelled E-L, it's spelled O-L, Google. It's uh, 10 with... 100 zeros behind it. That's what Google means, and Google couldn't even get that right, so I know it couldn't get me from the corner down here. So I finally walked up to an old guy, and I said, tell me where the waste treatment plant is. And he said, waste treatment plant, waste treatment plant. And he said in a Czech accent, he said, oh, the old shit place. <laughs> where they process the shit. I said, okay, yeah, that's where I want to go, to the shit place. So in this beautiful facility that we're in this evening, the waste treatment plant. Um, I wanted to relate a, a, a quick story about when I was in South Africa, you know, and I love South Africa. Um, I was speaking at the Kayansa conference there in South Africa, and I was speaking about high dose psilocybin. Um, and I'll be talking tomorrow upstairs uh, about high dose psilocybin and into the darkness. Um, not the regular darkness, but a special darkness that is the underworld of the comedic Netaru or deity Osiris, the lord of the perfect black, the duat, where the possibilities of everything are included and generate from. So I was speaking about psilocybin and another person was speaking about psilocybin also. And they said, I'm having a psilocybin ceremony this weekend. Can you come? I said, well, I got a pretty busy schedule. If I can arrange my schedule, I'll come to your psilocybin ceremony. I said, what is a psilocybin ceremony? Because, see, psilocybin is different than ayahuasca. It's not social, and especially in Africa. We have an old tradition of utilizing many special entheogenic, hallucinogenic plants and fungi. So when they say a ceremony, I was trying to figure out what they were talking about because the ceremony is that you eat a bunch of mushrooms, you lay down in the dark. That's the ceremony. It's not social. You don't have any songs. There's no campfire. There's no uh, special shaman person that's there. It's kind of like the Sith. You know, you have the rule of two with the Sith. There's a master and there's an apprentice. There's not, it's not like the Jedi where you got the Jedi temple and, you know, everybody's walking around and Yoda is telling everybody what to do and things like that. No, it is two. It is your teacher and it is you. 
and your teacher gives you the mushrooms, and you go lay down in the dark. And that's the ceremony. So I wanted to know what was the ceremony. She said, well, we're having a mushroom ceremony. I said, okay, well, if I can, I'll make it. I'll come if I can. Then the next thing I know, advertisements are out. Kalindi Iyi, world-famous mushroom expert, will be facilitating the um, mushroom ceremony <laughs> this weekend. And I said, well, since I get blamed for everything, I'll probably get blamed if something happens, so I better go. The only saving grace of the ceremony is that it was totally enclosed by an eight-foot fence, and the only way you could get out is with, a, uh, is with the code on the pad at the front gate. So the ceremony was this. There were about close to 70 people, of which 45, maybe 50 people had never taken a psychedelic in their life. And they were giving out five gram doses of uh, the South African version of the psilocybin mushroom, which is uh, kind, of, uh, kind of powerful. And so it was dispensed in liquid form. So everybody took their five grams and I didn't know that the people who were supposed to be the people who were watching the other 45, 50 people who had never taken psychedelics, they had taken it too. So I had, I was in control of the big Zulu hut, which was probably the size of this room. Great Zulu hut, and there was like maybe 35 people in the hut. And then they had another kind of like recreation hall with another 30 people in the recreation hall. So I was handling my business as far as the 35 people I had. I said, I'm going to give you the protocol. Once we get in this hut, lay down and don't leave. That was the protocol. <laughs> they didn't tell the folks in the other recreation hall any protocol whatsoever. So about an hour in, I hear somebody knocking on the door. So I get up and I, I take, you know, doses in the 30 to 40 gram, dry gram realm of psilocybin mushrooms. So, um, you know, five grams is, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge for people to take five grams, but um, it's not as, I'm, I'm, I'm used to that type of, uh, type of dose. So, I could function pretty good. So I went to the door and I said, what's the matter? And she said, I think these mushrooms are pretty strong and the people who are supposed to watch the other people, they're tripping. So I looked out, I pushed the door open and I see all these people, some are laying on the ground, others are, <laughs> some are spinning around and it's like maybe 47 degrees, so if you take all your clothes off and lay on the ground at 47 degrees, that's hypothermia. So I'm going around, you know, you can't lay on the ground. And I pick the person up, and they'll lay back down on the ground. Some other folks, they got in their car, and they, they're driving down the road. The only reason they didn't get out is because the keypad was, they couldn't get out. So it was an absolute madhouse for all through the night. Then um, they come to me and they said, uh, Kalindi, there's a guy and he's going around groping all the women. So this guy was going around, he was just. <laughs> and I said, look, you're going to have to control yourself. You're going to have to go in, lay down, and not grab the women. And he said, okay, I'm under control. So he goes and he lays down. I leave, and the next thing I know, I see him. So even though I've had many challenging, many challenging experiences on uh, the psilocybin mushroom, and it's taken me places that are unbelievable. See, mushrooms are different than the alchemies and things that we didn't encounter until we had already encountered the mushrooms. See, ayahuasca is an alchemy. You have to have domesticated fire. You've had to have uh, some type of vessel to be able to put the things in the, to, to boil it. 
you've had to figure out which plants to get. The mushrooms, you're just walking down the road with your friends. The mushrooms there, you're hungry. It's an afternoon, and you say, hey, let's take some of this. Let's try it. So you grab it, you eat it, and you have that experience. The other things, you have to put something together. But with the mushroom, it's whole within itself. It is a plenum of information that spans past the earthly realm. It goes into the macroverse and it goes into the microverse. There is no bottom to it. It's deep and it's dark. And at high doses, it's not fun. I know everybody talks about bad trips and talks about how, you know, you want to reduce the trauma of dealing with psychedelics and, you know, it's not all fun and games. As there is benevolent, benevolent <coughs> entities inside of this thing, there are also malevolent en entities inside of this thing. The encounters may be one way this time and totally different the next time. You go in and you build your power. You build your understanding. You build your wisdom. It's not all about shamanism. Shamanism comes from Siberia. We need to start calling the people what they are, whether they're an Okomfo or a Babalao or an Nganga. But the colloquial thing now is shaman. Everybody's a shaman. Everybody wants to be a shaman. That came out of the utilization of entheogens, hallucinogenic, psychedelics, whichever way you want to call it. I like psychedelic better than entheogen. Um, mind manifesting, I think that it, it helps to manifest the mind. So, to make a long story short, as far as what happened that evening, we all made it through. It was a challenging evening for me. And when it came about that morning when everybody was eating pancakes and shaking hands and happy that they had made it through, the little guy who had been all night going around like this, he was the only one still going around like this. <laughs> Thank you very much.